Do you ever find yourself a bit bored at work and want something other than the internet to distract yourself for a few minutes? Well, I found three gadgets which look perfect for procrastination, so let's try them out. The first one cost $25.99 and came in this box. Open it up and here we are. It's a moving sand art picture. Now these look really cool and I can't wait to try it out. Apparently you just turn it over and it makes some really cool art. It works a little bit like an egg timer. So let's open it up and oh what's this? A disposable syringe. Okay I wasn't expecting that to jump out of the box. I think this is part of the stand and if I slide this piece out, ha huh, here's the unit. Nicely protected. So it's got all this sand at the bottom and if I turn it over yeah it starts to stream down but yeah not very fast actually and you can see there's some pretty big air bubbles in there here's the instructions and ah I see the syringe is used to adjust the amount of air inside so I gave it a little shake around and sat it on the stand. You can see it's starting to do something. There's like a line of air bubbles underneath the top layer of sand and it slowly falls down in between them. That really is cool watching it. And as the sand slowly drops through, some of the air bubbles can rise on up, freeing up more sections of sand to fall through. And underneath, we get these amazing landscapes and dunes develop. I have speeded up the footage though because mine was taking quite a bit of time. And every now and again, it also just completely stopped. I had to give it a bit of a shake to get it going again. But reading the instructions, I think there's a little bit too much air in mine. And that's where the syringe comes in. Somewhere around the rim of this frame, there should be an opening. Ah, yeah, there's a little hole here. So I stood it up and shook it a little to get all of the sand to the bottom so the hole's at the top. Then open up the syringe and apparently to adjust the air, I've got to poke it through this seal into the bubble and I can suck some of the air out. Ah, there we go. It says adjusting the amount of air inside can alter the speed the sand drops down. And because the air pressure changes with temperature, you may need to adjust it once in a while. So, now the bubble's a lot smaller, I'm giving it a shake up. And you can see loads of little bubbles here now at the top. So I gave it a shake and let it settle, and I'm trying it again. Oh wow, check that out. It's all dribbling down on the right hand side. That's really cool. But then again it stalled. But after a couple more shake-ups, it started working fine. Now I can just turn it over and enjoy the show. And check it out, I've got some really cool landscapes. And it looks great switching up the backgrounds. I reckon this is really cool. I found sometimes it would take nearly 20 minutes to filter down, and other times it could be under 5. This one I bought is 12 inches in diameter, but you can also get them smaller, and they also come in a whole range of different coloured sands. So if you want something at the end of your desk that you can just look up at every now and again to distract your mind for a minute, I reckon this is really cool. And if you're enjoying this video, please do consider liking and subscribing. But next I want to try out this. It's a Stirling heat engine. This cost £37.99 and came neatly packaged in this little box. There's a few different parts, all neatly wrapped in bubble wrap. This part here is the base, and check it out, there's a little rod here that if we lift up and down, you can see the piston inside moving. Ha, huh, that's cool. Inside here is the little flywheel on a crankshaft, and inside here, ah, here's a little piston with a little con rod. It comes with a nice set of instructions which help to explain the principle of how it all works. And there's some links to show you how to set it up. So apparently I need to start by dropping the piston down here into the bore. And wow, that really is a very snug fit. Then once that's in, take the flywheel. And if you look, you can see it's spaced differently along the shaft. If you've got it the wrong way round, it won't fit in the holder. So make sure you've got it right. Locate one side. Then pull back the other arm and sit the spindle in this side too. It should now spin nice and freely in the holder. Next we need to take the cover off this little connecting rod and apparently we should be able to hook it up onto the crankshaft here. It's a little bit fiddly but yeah, yeah there we go. That's looking good. Next we need to do the same with the one on this side. It is a bit tricky but... Ha, there we go. And now when I turn the flywheel, you can see everything moving. Pretty cool, huh? And to use it, we need to make ourselves a hot drink. So I filled up the kettle and waited for it to boil. Let's fill up a mug and give it a try. So take the engine and sit it carefully on top of the mug. You need to leave it to sit for a few seconds so it warms up from the drink, then give it a spin. And oh wow, check it out. It's working straight away. That is amazing. Oh, I love that. And it's going pretty fast. You can see the little pistons going up and down and the conrods, and it makes a wonderful noise. Listen to that. 
the actual flywheel looks a little bent. There's a slight wobble to it. I guess I could try and straighten it out, but I quite like it. It adds a bit of character. A Stirling engine is often known as a hot air engine, and the fixed air inside is heated from an external source. In this case, the hot water from the cup. This causes the air inside to expand, lifting the displacer piston, which compresses the cool air above it and creates mechanical work. The gas inside moves back and forth between the hot side and the cold side of the engine. When it's on the hot side, it expands, lifting the piston, and when it's on the cold side, it contracts. But what a great little thing to have on your desk to marvel at while you're having a coffee break. And do let me know in the comments if you'd like me to look at some other small engines. But next up for this video, I bought this. It's a luxury executive ballpoint pen which hovers. It arrived the next day in this box, so let's open it up and take a look. It comes in this bag, which has been nicely sealed with this Novium sticker, and here's the box. Well, it does look and feel very smart. You can see I bought the Hover Pen 2.0 Interstellar Edition in Mars Magma, which is the colour. So, to open it up, this tray slides out. There's a nice piece of protective foam over the top, which we need to lift up to reveal the contents. Oh wow, check that out. It's presented really nicely, as you'd expect for a high-cost pen like this. It costs £100, so let's see if it's worth it. First of all, I'm lifting the pen out of the box, and check it out. It's a thing of beauty. It's made from a single piece of aircraft-grade aluminium, and it's uniquely machined as one long piece of metal, so it's designed to last. It feels a little bit weighty and really nice quality, and it's got this beautiful twist in it, and oh, even just sliding your fingers up and down it feels satisfying. Let's remove the cap from the end, and then there's the ballpoint nib. It uses magnets to hold it in place, so even just snapping the lid on and off feels satisfying. But you can see, if you don't line it up centrally, it sticks to the side. Now the pen comes in various colours. Black, blue, silver, and this lovely deep red Mars Magma colour. But let's see what else we've got in the box. Here's the pedestal. It's made from a zinc alloy, and again it feels solid and really beautifully made. It's a really interesting looking shape, and it's got this non-slip base, so it doesn't slide around on your desk. It also comes with this little pincer, which we'll be using later, and a spare Schmidt refill cartridge, which is a German-engineered luxury standard in ballpoint pens. And what's this? Ah, a rather nice set of instructions. White on black. That is nicely done. So, to get your pen hovering, all you've got to do is sit it on the base. And... Wow, check that out! And you can give it a little spin. Apparently, the pen sits at a 23.5 degree angle. And there's magnets in the pedestal, which just keep it hovering like this. That is awesome. That does feel nice, and I'm surprised at just how much I want to keep spinning it. Apparently, it'll spin for up to 20 seconds. What a great little fidget toy for your desk. Something to play with while you're mulling things over. Now, I did find you do have to be a little bit careful when you're putting the pen in and out of the holder, because it tries to stick to the side. Oh, and it can even pull the top off. But overall, it's easy enough to get right, but one thing I did think would be nice is if you could just pick it straight up off the base and write with it straight away rather than having to take the cap off. But you can just store the cap on the side of the pedestal so it doesn't get lost. And if we try writing with it, well yeah, it writes beautifully as you'd expect. It's comfy to hold, and you can tell it's a premium refill. And these little pincer things, well, they're actually for pulling out the cartridge when it's time to refill. You just grip the ends like this, and give it a pull. Ha, there we are. And take your refill, slide it down in, and give it a push. It would make a lovely gift for someone. But what do you think? Is it worth the money? But now, if you'd like to see some really cool viral TikTok gadgets, like this amazing crushing flask, or this morphing fidget toy, you can click on the link here to watch my video. Have fun, stay safe, and as always, thanks for watching!